Hello, and welcome back for another episode of the Accessible Technology Podcast. My name is Fabes, and this is a podcast where you get to hear all about the everyday technology that is accessible for disabled people, as well as learning what tech is less accessible. And where you also get details on how companies can start making their technology more accessible, if that's something you would like to start looking into. I have been paralysed from the neck down since 2001, and my only bit of movement is my head. So that's why all the reviews that you hear on here are recorded from the point of view of someone who has very limited movement. So if accessible technology is something you are interested in, then please make sure to follow and share. This podcast is now available to be downloaded on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible, and Spotify. However, you can also support the podcast and the other content I produce over on the blog and on the YouTube channel by going over to my faves now. Buy me a coffee page where you will be able to give me a one-time donation of whatever amount you would like to give. Plus you'll be able to subscribe for exclusive content episodes that I plan to bring out plus viewing content in an online shop that I plan to open at some point. In today's episode, we're going to be hearing my review of the Xbox Elite Controller Series 2 and hearing whether or not it is accessible for physically disabled people. But as always, Here's a couple of additional notes about the history of Xbox controllers and about the history of this controller in particular before we get stuck into the main part of the review and the episode. So the first Xbox controller ever released was a slightly round alien looking device with a large Xbox button on the top with two analogue sticks and a BYX button to wind it along with another spot for the old D-pad and other buttons including a start button and known as the Duke it was first released with the first Xbox in November 2001 The next controller that was released was the Xbox Controller S, which came in a similar build, but had some differences. Those differences were that the main Xbox button was shrunk down in size, and the analog buttons were in the same spot as on the first controllers with the ABYX button still being beside it. However, one of the differences between this controller and its predecessor is that it lost a slightly fatter bottom, which led to the black and white auxiliary buttons to be moved to the bottom of the controller and start and back buttons remove to the side. It will take a long time to go through every single controller that Xbox has ever released. So to slim the story down a wee bit, here's all the controllers that came next. 
the Xbox 360 controller from 2005. The Kinect motion controls controller from 2010. Modelled by the Xbox One controller in 2013. And the Kinect on Xbox One also in 2013. But then at E3 in 2015, Xbox released their first customizable controller, that being the Xbox Elite controller. The Elite controller took advantage of the traditional design while taking on a rubberized grip. As well as that, we also got a customizable D pad that could be swapped with the more traditional design, along with added haptic feedback triggers, interchangeable analog sticks, hairlock triggers, and paddles on the rear. Two more controllers came more in the next four years. Those being the Xbox One S controller and the Xbox Adaptive controller. But then in 2019, the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller came out with only a few changes between it and the older Elite controller. So that's what today's review is going to be about. And now that I've got through everything, let's jump straight into the review. The Xbox Elite Series 2 controller can work on the Xbox One S and Xbox One X and will work on the Series X and S as well voted the best at E3 in 2019 by Hardware Peripheral when it was released. On the front of the box you have a picture of the Elite controller itself with a black handle at the top and as we head on to the side there's a wee bit of information and then at the back you see two pictures of diagrams, one mentioning the adjustable from stick tensions and the split the preferred from sticks and D pad options as well as the limitless customizations with the other explaining your extended gameplay and durable components. In the box you get your case and the Elite controller will be inside your case. Different from the last generation of controllers which of overly controllers which I didn't have but did know about. This one has the rubberized grip going all the way wrong. So anyone wondering why I just have the magnetic D pad on here instead of the wand one, it's basically because I wasn't able to use the wand one. Also in the case, you get all your function options as well as a charger brick. And this charger brick is in itself really important because it basically allows you to charge your controller outside on a table or desktop or in your case. On the back of the controller you can see all the back 
stuff we have, including your paddles and the top bumper and trigger options we have. These triggers are very important because you can also edit them. So depending on whether or not you want to be able to hold the buttons down or press them down halfway or literally just tap them, you can do that. But because I can only do everything on top of the controller on the front of it, I don't use the back options. All the customizations you do in the Xbox accessories app, which you can get into by searching all the apps or going into the programs and apps and scrolling through. So if I go down to the bottom of this page, I text it into Xbox accessories. You can see that the Xbox and each wireless controller series 2 is one of my options so all I need to do is hit A for configure and go into that then if I go over to the button which is edit and click into that as well this is where they can adjust any of the customizations that they want to change. So if I want to change the thumbsticks from acting as a trouble, basically because I like using my stick as my primary stick instead of left. You can swap the stick over by clicking and then go into here. And if I can see at the minute that these are both checked, so if I then want to take that off, I would uncheck. But because I still like that way of doing stuff, then I'll just leave them then to, go, to say I'm happy with my customization and just hit back and then you can change and other options for other profiles by going into these but I still haven't got one to do in there because there is not too much I think that would help for the other ones other than possibly a Stick option being added to the options which I hope is something Microsoft could possibly think of including in one of the next updates. So what do I think about the Xbox Elite Wireless Controller Series 2 overall? Well, the good news is that even as a member of the disabled community, that uh, it is accessible enough to disabled people. Although I can't use the back 
bumpers and triggers and the paddles. I like how much you can customise them to whatever, to whatever is easier for you. And uh, even moving the joysticks and selecting which joystick is easier for you to use is very easy to do and uh, overall I would give it five stars. But enough about my thoughts, what are your feelings about the Xbox Elite Controller Series 2? Have you bought it before? And if you did, what were your experiences of it? Did you like or dislike it? Or are there any other controllers that you prefer? If you would like to pass on some of your thoughts, you can include them in a review wherever you're listening to this on, as well as via the contact pages over on my FabeCell Tech Review site, www.pltechreviews.co.uk. Or on my other website, phoebelow.com. If you're interested in watching the videos that I have done on accessible technology before, you can find more of them over on my PL Tech Reviews YouTube channel by just searching for it. And if you would like to see a couple of my accessible tourism reviews, as well as my film, TV, theatre reviews and political videos. You can see them by searching for my Fabe Cell Journalism YouTube channel. And you can also follow my other podcast, the Fabe Cell Podcast, by searching for it on all of the same destinations as you can listen to this podcast on. But of course, there is also the uh, I Me A Coffee page again. The next episodes are going to be slightly different than the ones I've done so far. As I start bringing you the audio versions of my experiments with adaptive gaming series that I cover on the YouTube channel, Starting with one about Velcro trays and clamps to balance your Xbox controller off, and the other being on whether or not a device known as a latch box, which you can plug switches into to help make holding down buttons more accessible is good enough. You can follow me on Twitter by searching and following at Phoebeslyle. And my Instagram handle is the real Phoebeslyle. However, you can also follow the Phoebeslyle tech review site if you have a WordPress account. Thanks for listening and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!